Welcome to the Salt Circle Podcast. My name is Hank. With me today, as always, is Ben. Yo, what's good? There once was a time when I would have caught all three. <sighs> so much, so much, uh, so many lines. So many lines. So, I mean... Uh, you that's half my that's half my notes we watched a lot um <laughs> so this is the the final final i don't the final portion of the first final squad se- final week of movie month <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, if you hear beeping there's a movie truck idling outside. So. Not the garbage truck? <laughs> no. no. We were too late for the garbage truck. Oh. Uh, um, it's just beeping constantly. Yeah, so this is... Uh, we're doing we're doing Western movies. And yes. we had originally... Westerns, Westerns yes. Uh, we had Not what? Just uh, any movie made in the West. <laughs> Fine, you got me on a technicality. This asshole. Um, yeah, so we had what originally four movies, and yes, but I did one... waffle between what the four would be. There were only yes. three of them I was ever fully I was fully set on, and being part of the list. and then one of them got swapped out. But for for sake of the podcast, I'm like, well. I can watch the one that we swapped out as well and bring it up to five. And actually, surprisingly, I found myself having a good time. And I'm like, could I watch other things? So we tacked on an additional two. And that uh, did you watch? Did you watch all the Dollars trilogy as well? Or did you not? I mean, I've watched them all. I've watched them all before. Yeah. yeah. Times I Um, only rewatched for a few dollars more. Okay, yeah. Which was the one on the list. Um, so we did two more, uh, for lack of a better term, serious ones, and then we also included the <laughs> the Magnificent Seven remake feels like too nice of a word, but whatever the hell that movie is, the new one. <laughs> the 2006 version movie called The Magnificent Seven, which, uh, you know... Honestly, just has the problems of being in a Hollywood movie from 2016. Yeah, as much as anything, it's yeah. We'll <laughs> we'll get there. Um, this I you know when you first put up the the movie night or the movie month listings on our on our Google Doc, I think I was the least excited for the westerns. I I've never seen any western. At all. Well, you've seen Star Wars? <laughs> okay, but like And and part of the part of the idea was of that list. It wasn't like the whole list, but part of it was some of these movies are Star Wars references. Sure. So Yeah. Our movie Star Wars references. So that was that was part of my thinking when I went down this when I yeah. crafted the movie the list. And then of course that month. High noon uh to to Blazing Saddles was there yeah um which is okay i've seen one western blazing saddles before now yeah um but it it surprised me it surprised me i thoroughly enjoyed myself mostly i should say um Uh some of it was expected some of it was unexpected um a lot of the uh like quintessential imagery or sounds like of westerns like that's that turns out that's how they are <laughs> uh-huh um yeah uh i think so let's, the four well the yeah, four yeah. movies that were on the list let's go actually go over them uh so the the three that i i wanted to do was uh the magnificent seven high noon and I picked for a few dollars more, which is the second movie in the Dollar Trilogy, because I knew I wanted to have one of those and not fill the whole thing with them. And that one's my, the one that I like the most. That's the, the reason I picked that one. I like that one the most. <laughs> um, 
and then I was gonna, I felt, I felt like, I actually asked a friend of, about like what, I need to fill out this westerns list. What's the fourth one? And we both kind of agreed like, at some point you're not really representing westerns if you don't have a John Wayne movie on there. But the problem is, I think those movies are bad er, and offensive <laughs> in other cases. So I tried to pick the one that was. <laughs> the least like the most palatable to my sense of like filmmaking <laughs> um and the one that's direct most directly a star wars reference thing cuz like we, so I went with the searchers and that whole the whole setup for that plot of his family getting murdered is what inspired the Luke coming home and uncle owen and mm-hmm. murdered by tuscan raiders that's yeah. like what that is. So, mm-hmm. so that was a choice. But then, you know, it came time to watch these movies. I'm like, I don't want to watch the Searchers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm bailing, pulling the plug here. So the, the two movies that I had also considered were, the Treasure of the Sierra Madre, which is the one I picked, and uh, the Wild Bunch, which is just a, that movie's just a little bit later and didn't fit in the old movie theme as much. Mm-hmm. Uh, Treasure of Sierra Madre, like, my friends so, uh, actually disagreed with me on it being a Western, but I think it, it's just it's Western-y enough, and it's, it's older than all the other movies we watch, and it's good, and it links to Humphrey Bo- the Humphrey Bogart week. And I just think that movie is, like... And as far as, like, Western-like movies that are older than anything we watch, I, don't, I can't think of anything... That comes close to being that good, so yeah, I went with that one, and it has the badges. We don't need no stinking badges line. Hell yeah, classic. (laughs) Um, I actually did want to. It might maybe maybe you'll disagree. I wanted to start with the searchers. Sure, like discussing. I mean, starting with John Wayne. That's that makes sense. Like. But I also that, that's like. It's not. It's not the earliest movie in the timeline, but that was the one that was there because that's like the baseline of. Yeah. Like what a western was until they started out, out making good movies. Um. I mean, I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> like I didn't re- want to rewatch it. I well for me I felt it was important to to get that side of things you know yeah uh-huh. cuz everything else was like decent <laughs> yeah. this one is like I mean, oh no yeah um the, it's at least like he, he a tr- there's true grit where he's wearing an eye patch that's like why are you wearing a fake eye patch this whole movie John Wayne that looks really stupid yeah um this one at least has like f- better filmmaking. I mean, I don't. I some it, it it's hit and miss. Sometimes I I watch a film, and a little voice in my head is like, "This could be representing something in the real world," and I I ignore it because I don't care. Uh-huh. And other times, I look at that voice and I go, "You're correct," and we should be <laughs> drinking right now. <laughs> like it I wrote at some point very very early on I wrote in my notes that everyone here is annoying in the in the early scenes before everybody died and uh-huh. I I wrote down man everyone here is annoying some 50s household bullshit over the course of the film I realized that like it's not even like a subtle like the the the, the dark skinned people are ruining our our home life. That's what it is. And I yes. just it's Oh, it was rough. Uh-huh. Like welcome every to, welcome to the, the baseline for even, Westerns. Yeah. Unfortunately. It, even, is, uh, it, even, it like it took a it, blatantly racist. It took a minute for me to get to the fifties the fifties household thing because I've like when um uh, um, when Ethan Fritz gets there and everyone's like freaking out, and uh, 
Ben, of all names, they had to go with mine. Um, <laughs> she like rolls in and fucking immediately this kid is like, she's got a fella. And then like, oh, golly gee, that's a swell sword. Well, I suppose you can have it. Like, I'm, I'm like, where is this? this is, I'm, I'm annoyed and a little angry but it's a familiar anger where have i felt this and i remembered it was uh watching fuck was it was the name of the show actually dennis the menace from like the 50s or 60s or whatever the hell i mean if you were watching a dennis the menace show probably yeah okay i wasn't sure if that was actually there the was a dennis i don't think there was a dennis the menace thing there's called something other than dennis the okay menace. I, I wasn't Though sure i know the there's like was... a british thing that's, that's called Dennis yeah. the Menace. That is not Dennis the Menace. But. Yeah, it's like just coincidence. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm like, this is that same sort of bullshit. So this is just like straight up a 50s like family. And yeah, I, I hate that. Everything. Yeah. Like just how they talk and the golly G's and the fucking shoot me in the face. Um, Look, Ben, it's when men were men and women were women. <laughs> and then Ethan's there like... Is it Ethan? It's Ethan, right? I don't His name? remember. John Wayne. He's there like three uh, minutes. Yeah, I know. I don't remember any character names in that movie. He was. I he, remember the people die. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Goes on the revenge quest. Um, he and gets he in. Okay. He's in the house for like two minutes, and dude walks in. And he's like, "Well, you look like a half breed," and I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> Oh, I understand why Hank didn't want to watch this. It's not, I, mm. Yeah. It was fucking rough. Um, yeah. And I mean, that just, like... Like, it might, I don't know, again, it's been a long time, so it might be rougher than, like, other John Wayne movies I could have picked. Yeah. In reality, it's just, you know, <laughs> been a long time. I mean, and but and yeah. like my problem with a lot of the older John Wayne movies is I don't like how they're shot. Like I don't like how they look, mm -hmm. which sticks in my mind more for these movies I haven't fucking watched in a long time. Yeah. Um, well, and I don't know. Maybe it's just like I don't I don't have too much experience. Maybe I'm totally off the mark here. But again, it did that early point before everybody dies it it feels like the dennis the menace shit it feels like a 50s sitcom or whatever the hell and then after that it transitions and it feels different and it's like yes. clearly that that analogy um and i didn't i've never well i mean also that movie is that movie is more recent than most of than like a bunch of the other stuff we watched. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not like it's which an makes older it worse. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Um, yeah. The one and this was was this the it's, this is late period John Wayne where it's you know being it's more open to the ideas of this worldview being challenged. Yeah, I I like read, at least the people uh, die instead of it's just that early part the whole time. Yeah. Instead of it's just incredibly annoying. Um, this There's was the just, you know, tragedy. This was the third film I watched, and we didn't, to my knowledge, um, we didn't really get any mention of it in Treasure of Sierra Madre or High Noon. But at this point, they were talking about the war, and like, it's not that I didn't know there was a war. I just like had this disconnect in my brain about like what war it would be so he's like of course i fought for the confederacy i'm like yo this i'm not surprised but like i just wasn't prepared um i suppose the other the only movie, other movie i know that we watched that definitely referenced it was magnificent 7 2016 uh ethan hawk's character fought for the confederacy yeah yeah there's a line about that in there mm -hmm. but yeah mostly it's not mentioned yeah it's like implied certainly but it's not explicit um and then i think like the peak uh i just want to say the the chick that gets like kidnapped or whatever her name's debbie and when they find her she's supposed to be like 14 but the actress is clearly like 18 <laughs> 20 23 25 some shit like that um uh. yeah uh 
on the way the I mean this this movie was whatever I'm, I'm focused on like one thing about it clearly when he I I don't know which exact instance it is I forget now but there's a uh, they kill one of the Native American guys and he goes and shoots the dude's eyes out and says it's because they believe that they need their eyes or something to get into the afterlife or whatever. So now he has to wander all around. And I'm like, that's you're th this is terrible. Like this is fucking <laughs> and it was bad enough that when I finished this film. I looked, I'm like, I have to know. I have to know if John Wayne is playing this character or if he is this character. And it turns out it's like, yes to both. <laughs> like, he's not yeah. that big of an asshole, but like, dude was kind of a dick. He's not quite, no, no, no. He's not, he's not quite as bad, but he's, he's still real bad. Yeah. It was like, I gotta, I mean, there's a lot of rough shit there. Yeah. So he made a movie the, as a reaction specifically to High Noon because he was like, that movie is about blacklisting, but I love blacklisting. So I'm going to make my my movie that's like anti-High Noon. That's mm. Rio Bravo. I mean, where, he also made... You know, it's basically the same setup, except he has his whole his squad that goes with him. He's not like ostracized by the town. Yeah. Um, he also apparently made like one of, if not the only major Hollywood films in support of the Vietnam War. Yeah. I want to actually hang on. Uh -huh. I want to, this is, this is important. Um, I would like to pull up the quote because I feel that it is important. Do you happen to remember the name of it? Like, oh, producer. Um, doesn't have them listed on here. It's too it's positive Vietnam War movie. Yes. Green Berets. Is that that that's the one. That's the one. Where the hell is Green Berets? Why is this not listed under his uh, bullshit? Um. I mean, I suppose I could just. Uh, It's from 1968. Yes. Um, don't re don't steal my quote. <laughs> um, I had a uh, history teacher make us watch that movie in class. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I was so the, not happy. <laughs> the quote from one of the uh, um, one of the one of the cr critics or whatever. John Wayne, bless him, has convinced me he's more of a patriot than he thinks. His movie, The Green Berets, which opened yesterday at the St. Francis Coliseum, El Rey, and Geneva Drive-In, will without question unite the Doves and the Hawks. It is the first film about Vietnam about which there can be no controversy, no dispute, no argument. Nobody who sees it will find a single reason to disagree that it is the phoniest, most laughable war picture in many years. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Fuck. Who wrote that? They had me in the first half, not gonna lie. Uh, Stanley Echelbaum hmm. from the San Francisco Examiner. <laughs> Fucking amazing. Yeah, amazing. But yeah, I, 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 having uh, watched that movie, uh, yeah, that movie's funny as shit. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, uh, that movie sucks. Um, and then, like, yeah, all of his, all of his blacklisting bullshit, like, anti communist garbage. Yeah. Um, they also, where is this? Oh, for his, like, he did two interviews with Playboy, and one of them, like, talks about Midnight Cowboy and calls, like, just throws around the F slur a whole bunch. Ugh. Great. Yeah, no. It checks like, out to the to era. <laughs> yeah. And I just, yeah, no, he seems like an asshole. I mean, they're... Yeah, yeah. There are movies he's in that are not like John Wayne movies that yeah, are like okay, but uh, like the Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, I remember liking okay. That's a Jimmy Stewart movie that he's in. I just um, 
again, I haven't watched that movie in a long time. It could not. Maybe it doesn't hold up. But yeah, <laughs> my like, like the classic John Wayne movie is it's fucking bad, and yeah. also just a lot of them are not made well. <laughs> yeah, they're just like they're not the 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 filmmaking is bad. On top of them being gross. So I think it's like it's like lose loose. My favorite bits that um I I forget where I read it, I'm gonna it doesn't really matter. Um like I mean it's somewhere in his Wikipedia page. It's him declining a, I think it was at least two film roles for the same reason that they were un he found the script to be un American. But they they uh-huh. come to him for the searchers and he's like, I shoot him in both eyes, right? Like what what <laughs> this is fine. Yeah. Uh huh. Fuck. I just I can't. It's it's so gross. But yeah, that. Yeah, everything yeah. after that felt amazing in comparison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like that's that's the thing. My that's that's yeah. like a baseline. But then that those kind of like the white hat western stuff. It moved out of movies. It it became like there were TV shows. Yeah, yeah. That were doing that. And then a lot of the Western movies then were were then coming out of Europe. Like the Dollar Shilgies. Those are like Spanish Italian co productions. So yeah. they have like, you know, the other problem of brown face casting because like none of those people are Mexican. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, kind of wondering about some but of that. The, it's yeah, uh the guy who who plays the main villain in Magnificent Seven and is Tuco in uh, Good, Bad, and Yogi. That guy is Jewish. Yeah, that checks out. Yeah. So that's that's a thing. But when you compare, like, those movies to, you know, what Westerns were, it's like, okay. It's still, it's bad, but it's not, it's, it's not as bad. Honestly. Yeah, it's not abysmal. It's not like actively hateful. Yeah, it's like these are bad practices that are of the industry in terms of how they're what they're who they're willing to cast in roles. Yeah, but at least the it, it, you just had to have. To, it's like this is old movies. This is what the industry is. If you're going to deal with that, but movies are you know. They're problematic, but they still like them. Mm-hmm. They're old. Yeah, so Searchers was a a fucking thing. Um, yeah. I I have a couple people in my life not not my not my <laughs> friends, but like I know that some of my friends' dads are like super into John Wayne, and like I there's a there's a bit of respect lost if I'm being honest. Anyway, should have started with it. Um, I should have done the searchers first and then followed it with High Noon because that one was a little, eh. But um, mm. uh, where do you want to? Where do you want to go? Which one do you want to start with? Just in order, or there was something you were thinking? No, we can do it in order. Okay. Um. Yeah, Treasure of Sierra Madre is sort of. An awkward fit is Western. It doesn't have the a lot of the tropes, but it is you... like for a 1948 movie. I really expect respect like how willing it is for these characters are terrible. <laughs> these are like mm-hmm. bad people, and the movie is like these are bad people. Yeah, um, it, it's it's still like a 48 movie in that you c- it kind of has a happy ending, despite the fact that Humphrey Bogart goes crazy and gets murdered. But dude, you know. I. I, I didn't know it was a Humphrey film. I was so surprised. <laughs> Even, like, I think yeah. when I downloaded it, I just kind of, like, hit the links. I didn't really take the time to look at the poster. So it starts up, and uh-huh. I'm like, my boy. Yeah, like, yeah. it shows up. It's it's so good. Um, I have... Oh, oh, okay. It took me... I have some notes. Because also, like, as far as, like, Humphrey Bogart... Gart's oeuvre like it's a great one to 
make sure you watch because it's it, it you see a different side of his abilities mm-hmm. of being able to just be crazy <laughs> and sh- shitty yeah in regards like, like the like the part where he pl- spent most of his career playing a villain <laughs> mm-hmm. uh for this as far as this being a western goes i i have two notes that actually relate quite well to that the first one was if this is a western why are they on a boat i believe they took a ferry early on so fucking i knew something was fishy and uh the note following that was god damn it hank this is a minor movie not a western so you know i i saw you know, it through you go, your, i saw it through your you bullshit. west to mine <laughs> um early on i thought I thought it was going to be more important that he hit up that same dude for cash like three times in a row. I didn't even I didn't even no. notice it the first two times, if I'm being honest. And then between the second mm. to third time, I'm like, oh shit, he's gonna do it again. <laughs> and he's like, treat a treat a man to a treat a fellow American to a meal. Immediately gets a clean cut at the barber shop. Instantaneous. That part's relatable. As someone who has been asked up for money by the same person multiple times. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this I the dialogue in this movie was fucking amazing. Um, yeah, there was uh, the 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 old guy. The old guy had so many good rants. It was great. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and I think. For me personally, completely subjective, some critics might disagree. I think of all the films we watched, this one had the best single line. Do you have any guesses as to what it might be? Uh, no, because I didn't take any notes for this one. So I'm like, okay. I'm down. I don't the line would be, that's the kind of sugar Papa likes. <laughs> Just fucking stellar. Humphrey Bogart. I would. I wouldn't. A, have, I wouldn't have gotten that one. Is a yeah. time traveler who entered my <laughs> mind and shoved this line into my lexicon. It's fucking amazing. I was a hundred percent not expecting. I was fucking laughing. I had to rewind a little bit. Like I missed shit. I was laughing so hard. I was. Not, he's so fucking happy. He just shouts it, and it's oh my god. It was amazing. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, the script is really, really uh, good. <laughs> and I wanted to ask if the uh, if the the old man, the the prospector, was that your inspiration for your uh, Dungeons and Dragons character? Because I noticed a lot of similarities. Sniffing no. out gold, earning that coin. Um, my inspiration <laughs> for that is more like Wario. <laughs> if I'm gonna be real. <laughs> Uh, I've just always had an affection for that kind of character, going back to when I was a kid. Like, mm-hmm. it ties into a character I created um, when I was like playing Legos with my friends. It was like half Wario, half Destro from G.I. Joe, except I wasn't a G.I. Joe fan, and I only learned later in life that Destro was like... <laughs> this idea that I co- sort of cobble together myself from other stuff. So that's fun. Except Destro is more Scottish. Yeah. And less Wario. Um, I mean, in that same vein, I totally... There were, there were a few... I was pretty proud of myself for a few of these catches because normally I'd as I'm sure you and anyone listening is probably aware of, I can get pretty damn oblivious with, uh, with things in films. Uh-huh. But when, uh, when Humphrey was like, I would leave it at $5,000. I promise. Uh, I don't think you would. If you would, maybe you would have told me that. I'm on to you. I'm on to you, Humphrey. Um, yeah. Also, uh, oh, uh, I just I just noticed the second greatest line in this film was "You're dumber than the dumbest jackass." I'm <laughs> I'm using that. That's going to come up. 
Dolphy weekend. It might come up soon. <laughs> it's fucking great. That old guy, I I have to go back and I, I'll, I'll just watch like his rants because it's so quick, and it it, it does remind yeah. me of um like the the same sort of feeling and surprise that I had watching the the Humphrey Bogart films where it's like shit is just like it's fucking going and it just feels very good. It was so nice. Um, yeah, yeah. There's just like that that era of like. 40s movies or whatever where just dialogue fucking snapped <laughs> before Hollywood movies became more bloated mm-hmm. uh, or and more or just different um, when the, the script really mattered it uh it but also like, like the the pivot from when they didn't have scripts like yeah <laughs> once they, they realized you could write you you should write movies instead of like coming out of the silent era. <laughs> mm-hmm. Still um, it was very good for a while. I was, and also Walter oh, Houston, yeah. who, uh, who who played the old prospector, he did win the Oscar. For oh hell yeah! That that's that's very good. So he deserves it. They got that one right. Um, I I I'm looking at my notes, and I of course remember, I was. I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell who was gonna go where. There was so many. It, they kept it very. What, what's the word I'm looking for? Not secret, but like. At first, I'm like, the old man's gonna fuck him. He's like sowing dissent between, uh, uh, Carton and uh, what's his name? Uh, ha- Sobs, Hobbs. Whatever the hell Humphrey's character is. Dobbs. Um, Dobbs. It was an Obbs. Um. I, there's like that point where they're both going out to check on their treasure and like the old dude's like I don't know he just went out and I'm like oh shit old dude's gonna get them both in the end and like for a second there I thought like Humphrey's character was going to be like the same shit we saw like f- three or four times back to back in Humphrey Night or Humphrey Week where it's like he's a selfish prick until he isn't uh huh um it took like I I resisted I resisted the shit out of him like going crazy because I didn't want it to happen not the not the Humphrey but it did <laughs> and it was yeah. actually like once I once I learned to accept what was going on it 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 was pretty cool again be, like yeah. you mentioned it, just it, because of how it's pretty clearly telegraphed once you know what's gonna happen but again like it's a pretty because if you've seen those other Humphrey Bogart movies where he's the hero it's pretty yeah crazy how much of a terrible like how much not of a hero he is in this movie yeah but he's the one that goes the crazy and this did come out like after all those other movies this was 48 mm-hmm. so it was uh two years after the big sleep see and i i thought how it would go is that he's like the most like even before it gets like extreme he's clearly like the most paranoid and all that shit He's corrupted the most by all this gold. And I'm like, okay, so he's going to be the one to, like, give it away in the end, and he's going to have that that development? <laughs> no. No, it's not that way. <laughs> it was it was very good. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't expecting it. Um, How after he um, shoots his friend like because they're when they're go going back on their own at the end Mm -hmm. and then he keeps he's like oh i better bury him oh no that's gonna take too much time i gotta get out of here and then he's just like stewing in his tears he's like what if his eyes are open i better i better go bury him i better go bury him dude it was like he gets back there and dude is gone yeah he's just away that's so good (laughs) it's it was some edgar Allan poe shit dude like that crazy, <laughs> yeah, it yeah, was yeah. so good. I love that little that bit with himself. Oh, it was great. Um, the old guy. And they just build like, it so well throughout the movie of him like just working himself into fucking a fever. Yeah, dude. Over, like over getting paranoid. I in and like how he he's relentless in it. Like yeah. 
uh, the bit with the whatever fucking lizard it is. And they're like, okay, like, if you don't believe us, like, stick your hand in there. Like, go for it. Oh, and then they flip the rock and there's a fucking the thing in there that's poisonous or venomous or whatever the hell yeah. it is. Like, you would think, but now he's, you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. The, uh... I, I get why it happened, but the I I love that the the event to get them like separated from the from the prospector uh -huh. was like he saves a kid and becomes like a medicine man and he's just like getting uh -huh. fed grapes by women. It's fucking amazing. Like that cut to him just like C three PO in the Ewok village is is amazing. Yeah. It's like just, there's like just, it's just abstract enough that it's fine. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's so stylized. It's like that whole crowd of people just watching him just like yeah. lift the kids' arms up and down over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Like he did almost nothing. Yeah. Uh-huh. He, um, like rubs some tequila in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, tequila. <laughs> yeah. Um No, this was a this was a good one. Um Yeah. I I wish I I don't know what I was thinking. I wrote what a great bit of dialogue at the end and I didn't include any quotes, so I'm just going to have to trust mm. my past self that it was fire. If I if I recall right, I think I would have been referring to like, um, I mean, obviously like when they when the 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 gold is now uh, dust in the wind and they're laughing, and then the old guy is just talking about how like I mean he's set up clearly like he's gonna go be a yeah. fucking medicine man until medicine. he dies. And it's gonna be amazing for him, I'm sure, and uh. he he. I think he says something to the effect of like it's the it's the chase or it's the journey or something it, the equivalent of like it's not getting the gold it's finding the gold or something like yeah. that. I like um the other guy Tim Holt uh, is the actor's name. He has a line that's like, well, you know, now that the worst has happened, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seemed like it would be much worse until it happens, and uh, you know, now just you know can move on. I, Which is like, that's where the, Walter Houston's character, the old guy, is coming from. Like, mm -hmm. he's been through the worst. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he knows all the ways this is gonna go wrong, and he's explicit about it beforehand. And uh, you know, it still goes wrong, but you know. And see, I you move on. Life goes on. Like talking about the worst isn't so bad. Like. Yeah, a little poorly Feels timed. Relevant to, to now. Little, <laughs> see, I thought it was like it's relevant, but it's poorly phrased because like the worst still feels pretty fucking bad. But mm -hmm. I was I was like thinking about, hang on, oh, brother-in-law just smashed that call button on Discord. Blue, I couldn't hear myself speaking. Um, <laughs> it, it's the loud. He's doing it again. I gotta let it. I gotta text him. <laughs> It's so loud. <laughs> Why is it this loud? I'm already on Discord. <laughs> ah, hang on. I can't remember what I was even saying. I'm on a call with a friend. Smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, the worst. Um, I, I, I was like thinking of um, like when I was in university and the worst was going to class and I fucking hated it it was stupid and i didn't want to fucking go and it was the worst thing i had to get out of bed and go be with stupid english majors and just a bunch of garbage and i got to class i'm like yeah this isn't so bad it's pretty interesting <laughs> like that was just my there's so many times where i'm like i don't want to do this thing and it's not even the worst but it just feels like it's insurmountable and then i do it and it's fine so uh -huh. it's a pretty pretty uh uh Familiar, familiar feeling. Yeah. No, I like the I like the just the thing of those. They steal the 
mules and they find the bags of gold and they just think they're bags of sand. Yeah, yeah. Them for fun. It's like that classic, like, psycho thing of like, you think the money matters, but then like these characters just throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, you mean like the Joker thing from The Dark Knight? No, not like that. No, it's just like that. Nope. Humphrey Bogart was the inspiration for the Joker. <laughs> he does have a good laugh. It's, I mean, it's unsettling as shit. <laughs> <laughs> there was, he just starts laughing. <laughs> there was, um, there was quite a few times in this film, and I think it's, I think it applies to, uh, to some of the other older films we've watched unsettling music in old films is a hundred thousand times more unsettling than unsettling music in new films and i don't even think they're trying to be that unsettling but fuck them i feel so uncomfortable i don't i don't know exactly what it is but there it, it yeah not that it's know. always it, it made me think that something way worse was gonna happen than it did. <laughs> and then just nothing happens. Uh-huh. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like watching this again, I've forgotten like how positive the ending is. Like Yeah, it's pretty like it's the, pretty at upbeat. the end it's pretty uh, it's pretty upbeat and like oh yeah, that's definitely a sign of this being a forties movie. That after all that it's still you know, you gotta leave them smiling. You yeah, leave yeah. Them on a good note. Well, not the Humphrey fans, but everybody else. Well, yeah, the heroes. Yeah, yeah. Things work out for the good guys, or whatever. Um, yeah, I think that that's like all I had on that one. Sure. Um, wait, one, uh, two, two quick last thoughts that I just noticed. Uh, the beans. I had a chuckle because this was my first taste of like a stereotype that I'm familiar with. Like, just eating uh-huh. beans uh, around the fire. Uh, and then the fact that they were using jungle sounds in Southwest America. <laughs> like there's like monkeys and shit in the background. Like it sounds like they're in the, the Amazon or something. So that was that was great. No, uh, movie That's movie good. is very good. Highly, highly recommend. What's uh what's next? Uh high noon. High noon. Next. next release. So I love this movie. This is actually one of my favorite movies, period. Mm-hmm. Um But I take it you were you were more mad on it. I'm I'm very lukewarm. And maybe as as often happens, maybe our conversation will will sway me or at least convince me to like look at it differently or even watch it again in a new light um i was i was looking forward to it i think the most like i was very confident early on i guess is the better phrasing um Uh i think i think my i think i watched it with the wrong mindset so i didn't appreciate it for what it was i was thinking that we were going to have a airplane situation in regards to blazing saddles and it is not that <laughs> no 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 like it's i thought like, there was going to be some of the thing. stupid shit that just like like at before obviously after i got a ways into the film i realized this wouldn't happen but i was like do they actually do the fake town bit at the end like <laughs> i didn't no. i didn't know um so i think I think honestly, like down the road, this deserves a rewatch for me, so I can uh, appreciate uh-huh. it for what it actually is. It was, as as it stands, like with the with the feelings still in me, it it's like a a true neutral film. I have like mm-hmm. no ill will towards it, but I'm not like maybe even a good neutral. I guess I'll give it a good neutral. Like I have no ill will towards it, but it, it also didn't like tickle my fancy, except for Helen Ramirez. She tickled my fancy. I mean, she's phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, no, her character was very good, and also she's slamming. So, twofold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I just love the way that movie like holds its tension for the whole way through and builds it. That's just the thing I like in movies. And it does a cool thing of like basically being set in real time where you have an hour until Frank Miller arrives and it takes yes, an hour. Yes. I I noticed that. I was very that part was very good. And there's like the the clock ticking stuff I really like. Mhm. Like the 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 building. I love that scene where you remember when he when he sat in that chair, what he said? And like the way it shoots the chair with him with that guy quoting Frank Miller saying, I'll come back and I'll kill you. Yeah. I'll hunt you down. And the way they and they like go back to that chair shot later. I don't know, there's just a lot of little little touches I really like in terms of how it's put together. And just the way like everything snowballs against him. Yeah, the, like, just the lack one person of... doesn't want it, doesn't want to go in, and then he can't build any kind of momentum. Mm-hmm. And like the the part that's the most like that a scene in Blazing Saddles is based on it is the church scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the rising speech that's like it's like out of Julius Caesar in terms of like it's, it's, he's an honorable man, but fuck him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of of the the guy who's like, oh, I love Will Kane. He's the best, but uh, he should get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like the way that speech at the end, it, it, that guy's speech changes from where you think it seems like it's going, and just the way you know, nobody's willing to to go along, but he and he's like doesn't want to do this, but just he feels he has to. Mm-hmm. It just works for me. I like the song. The the intro? Yeah. It plays throughout, but yeah. Well, uh, sorry, oh, the theme. God. The theme, yes. I like that it has a theme. Fucking guy. And I like how the 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 shootout goes, like the structure of Yes. That the, fight. The shootout was very of, like, good. Positioning. I like. I love what he's like in the barn shooting at them, and then he like pulls back, and the guy runs up and pre-fires at where he was. Yeah, and then he counters by shooting that guy. I like that. I like As a siege player, too. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> he goes based on where the ping is. Yeah. And, yeah, you uh, gotta you gotta deal with it that. Work out for him. <laughs> um. Also, the uh, uh, Frank Miller's reveal was very good mm. like yeah i think i just was expecting someone more crass like a, a a rough scraggly alcoholic and he steps off and you're like oh this guy looks like he means fucking business quite, yeah because they, they're good. always they're talking about like he's a crazy wild man and he's like yeah. way more determined to just fucking murder this dude <laughs> yeah no, like it's cold, hard. Like you're gonna die. It's very the yeah. the. I I like them. I also just like the, the way like it builds on. Like its world, the way you learn stuff about, that like this is it was all about it's something that happened five years ago, and that how the, the town has kind of changed since then. Like he yeah, had six deputies back then, which is like. If there were, you know, roving gangs back then, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. I don't have didn't need those other deputies anymore. And he's getting older and stuff. I don't know. I like the <laughs> the guy going. Well, you better build more coffins. We need at least. Four. Yeah, yeah. I wrote that. I I wrote that fucking line. How many coffins we got? Two. I gotta, I gotta need, need at, at least, least four. four. Anyway, a slice it. Yeah, that was a that was a good bit. Um, what's her name? Uh, Amy looks like Elizabeth Banks, kinda. <laughs> I actually looked up. I thought there might be relation, but there is not that I could see. No. Yeah, I didn't have a. I didn't have a ton of notes on this one. If if. Danny. 
I like that it had a nice runtime. Some of these got long. I mean, I didn't as as I said yeah, yeah, before yeah. we started this. Good, bad, and ugly was three hours. This is a three hour film. This one was tight. This one was like Godzilla time. <laughs> the yeah, best it's, time. It's an hour thirty. Yes, exactly. I mean, that's another movie, reason this movie's tight. Right? Why it has? <laughs> yeah. it's like the right length. The tension is held for the right amount of time. It's not, it doesn't feel like a lot of these westerns are bloated. Like yeah, another another. When I think of bloated westerns, I think of The Alamo, starring John Wayne, which has a fucking intermission. Oh, Jesus. Okay, well, that's rough. <laughs> and it's just like, like I'm watching it on TV. Like, this is bad. And now this movie is going to sit here for like 10 minutes playing music. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> literally telling me to fuck off for a while and go get dinner or something. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, this uh yeah. High High Noon deserves yeah. a, another watch from me. Yeah. Well, Amy is play, uh, played by Grace Kelly who's also in a lot of Hitchcock movies. Okay. Oh, well, she so, that checks out. She's blonde. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he loved I mean he loved blondes yeah and she got married and stopped being in his movies so he had to go find other blondes well is how that went <laughs> the bitch how dare she um I mean apparently he was an asshole about it yes yeah man yeah uh, yeah I, I I love Nine Noon that's one of my favorites and kind of one of the ones of like westerns, though, for me, as far as the genre goes. Mm -hmm. Certainly, like the most like Gary Cooper is the most of like traditional like man's man hero. Yeah, he's like except it's except you know it's not you know what terrible the way John Wayne's are, dude. Do you know like literally actually thinking you just you saying that has made me realize like what I thought about about his character uh -huh. he so again i knew nothing about westerns like yeah. just the, the i knew about westerns from other films that referenced westerns that's all yeah uh -huh. his character is what i thought john wayne's character was like most of the time like if i think about it like mm -hmm. like he's the good guy he's not the racist asshole who's shooting native americans eyes out of their corpse like he's the uh, he's the fucking he's the sheriff or the deputy or whatever the marshal or whatever his title was i'm forgetting at this moment um he was the sheriff right or he, he was the marshal marshal ha anyway it was about a, getting a new marshal right right um like that's that's what i thought like the the upstanding dude like that's that's what I thought of for for westerns, you know, just a straight. I I mean, a lot of these other ones, um, as we kind of mentioned, it gets kind of into like, you know, the the white guys versus the rest of the guys a little bit. Yeah. Um. Uh. And, I mean, this is this was more, again, in my in my mental image of westerns, it was just two white guys, and one was good, and one was bad. And yeah. this this fit into that that mindset more, um, even though it didn't have the. Uh, it was like a combination of this and then like the Clint Eastwood films, <laughs> as far as like duels and shit go, and someone somebody wearing a poncho. There weren't enough ponchos. That's why I didn't like the film, Hank. Oh yeah, I mean that's really just Clint Eastwood. <laughs> yeah, that's that checks out. <laughs> Uh, another thing I like about this movie is that the villain is named Frank Miller because Frank Miller is a comic book writer, oh. who, and that who wrote like some of the most important comics, and then also went crazy and wrote some hot garbage and some really offensive stuff. So, right on, posing him as a villain <laughs> works out for me. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a movie. I need to give it another yep. chance. 
I can I can appreciate it for for what it is, even regardless. So now we can move on to the original, the Magnificent Seven, or Seven Samurai. This time, it's in the West. I. This one is I okay. I, it's a great film. I, I fucking love this yeah. film. I took like no notes. <laughs> Fair enough. I really enjoyed the movie, but I just I I don't know. I didn't take any note. I took I took one note early on that just said digging the main man because he had that like he had an accent and I couldn't place it. And then it turns out he's Russian American, but he just was cool. Like he was a cool, Yo solid partner. dude. Yeah. Um. And then the uh, the only other note I had was when, uh, when the the second dude that he uh, convinces to tag along is like, well, how many you got? And Yuli just like puts up one finger, and it cuts back to the dude, and he just puts up two fingers. Amazing! Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. so good. It's- emblematic of what was to come no this was a very enjoyable movie yeah this is so (laughs) you're not recognizing who steve mcqueen is tells me you don't know who steve mcqueen is i know the name uh, i know that he was in cars yes he was in one of his famous roles is driving also famous for riding motorcycle did you just Run miss my joke the there? In the did, you just, did you just miss my joke? No. Because the yes. main character of Cars oh, is yeah, Lightning yeah, McQueen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's because it's a Steve uh, Queen. Steve I'm, McQueen reference. It is. That is the thing. That's a, that's a full circle. That's just a loop. I mean, I'm, a flat circle. Whatever, Hank. <laughs> anyway. Also, there's a director called Steve McQueen who's a completely different person. I feel like I've gotten them confused before at some point in my life. <laughs> okay. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Steve McQueen and Charles Bronson are also in the The Great Escape, which is another like ensemble big movie. Okay. About them all being trapped in a prisoner of war camp and escaping. Hmm. Has, it has some similar th- this movie has similar vibes to that as being like a Hollywood movie of that era gotcha um, but like this is a good example of what I really like about Steve McQueen where he's not he's great at just being a movie star and not talking <laughs> like his physical acting is really fucking good yeah and I I I've like there are movies he starred in that I'm less into, but when he's like part of an ensemble and he doesn't have to, he can just be there, and he be cool. Uh, I think he's very good at that. Yeah. Oh, he was he was phenomenal. Uh, uh, one one thing that came up in this film, I think it also came up a bit. Hilariously enough, I think in the Searchers. Uh. I've never seen this in another film, and I don't think I've ever seen it in a TV show except like some variation in The Simpsons. Why are people out here going ha ha ha? I just I never I I knew that was a stereotype, but I'd like. Do you have any any idea? At all? I have no. Like, that's I have just no it's just there. Me. It's just there, and nobody says it. <laughs> <laughs> clearly a style of laughter yeah man as was the style at the time <laughs> I, it's, I what, it's just I that one dude though that it's that just one. the one guy uh, anyway i thought it was funny because i'm like it, they just did that <laughs> nobody's yeah. saying anything um but yeah, yeah this is like this is like the you know the popcorn more light less serious version of seven samurai like it's mm-hmm. it's the hollywoodified version but it's still pretty fucking good yeah <laughs> they still they still got enough of what was great about the the story yeah like the i mean it's really 
fucking easy to see how it's good in comparison to the new one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, holy shit. Um, we'll to that at the end. <laughs> dude, the... So, the... the I think the, the ending in Seven Samurai, which maybe to be yeah. expected, still infinitely more potent than than the oh, original yeah. Magnific- Magnificent se- uh, Seven. Yeah, yeah. Like... I'm get, I'm literally like I'm getting chills just thinking about it right now. It it's so good. It's so fucking good. Yeah. Like that. I all the that one that one and... goes for it and hits that nail square. This is like this is like tapping at it. Like they, I'll get that yeah. nail in eventually. Yeah, they. <laughs> just, it's soft. Let's, how can we make this gentle? Put a little put a little rubber on there. Soften it. Yeah, they don't. If one guy gets the girl. He stays. Yeah, they like they they toy around it, and then like someone else has to, you know, like it's it's not yeah. delivered directly. You get your happy ending, still, and then you get the line. <laughs> yeah, but they still the yeah. farmers. They, they still get there a little bit. Yeah, it's. I it's, mean, it's there. It's just, at least, you know, at least they, nobody... they got that sweet honey on it to make the medicine go down. Yeah, and as a nice bonus uh nobody says it was magnificent (laughs) (laughs) fuck can't you're spoiling i 2016 (laughs) the the 2016 version is a fucking abomination It's not even. It's not that bad a movie, but in comparison, it's really fucking. Coming, bad. R- coming hot off of watching the original, it looks yeah, like yeah. hot trash. It's fucking terrible. Yeah, no, it's not. It's like, bad. I looked. I looked because I'm like, there had to be. There had to be like critical outrage of this film. Like it's the film no. industry. People had to light this thing up, and I look. And all the reviews are like, it's a fun movie that doesn't quite hit the same marks as the original but it's still a good time like how are you people not fucking tearing it to shreds this is awful my favorite my favorite review i saw was yeah it's more like the mess seven the mess <laughs> yeah it's not nearly as magnificent <laughs> and uh, for, i did i think i saw before i before the movie was over i think i had like read something and i was worried that the ending was because they they said uh something about like just finding bulletproof heroes and Uh, i was like don't tell me they all live (laughs) (laughs) yeah it was it's just a it's it's a fucking mess um yeah even i tried circling back to the original film um in comparison again like the the fact that they did they did so well with still making it feel like it's just a bunch of people who can't fight and so they don't really have them do too much versus the new film where they're like well we're gonna train you all to fire guns and then basically create an army in like a couple days yeah i don't know (laughs) do you want to just get into the new one now because i'm like i'm like holding back because i'm gonna i have to go off on it (laughs) I'm like, I mean, I just, I guess we just have to do this. We have to do it now. It's, it's, it's impossible. Just, you can't, I, you can't, it's too, look, it's too linked in your brain. Look, I guess. things were set in motion when we watched that uh-huh. film immediately after watching the original. So yeah, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> fucking pump it. Yeah. These fucking white people in this new one, <laughs> they just have, they don't band together. They just have plenty of guns and money. Like, there's, uh, there's just a fucking line of them shooting guns. It's like, oh yeah, there was that scene in the original where they were training them to use guns because they had gotten, like, three guns from the bandits they'd killed. Because that's how you yes. get guns. You yes. get them by yeah, killing they your only, enemy. They only got it's guns like after fighting. Classics. Yeah. yeah. These people just had guns. They had guns <laughs> at the beginning of the movie. They were just, like, you know, getting shot and axed. So many people get axed in the new one. Well, that's because you got to break up the gunplay. It gets too dull. People like the <laughs> hatchets in people's throats or whatever. And there's knife guy. 
They could have given Knife Guy more to Whatever. do. He didn't he even did... use knives once the fight Dude, started. He, I, he did more to those fucking dummies in the training session than he did to any person in the film. And then and everyone walked away and they're like, that's not cool. This is a Western. <laughs> we'll Get out of here. We'll never learn how to do that. Well, you don't need to. I you mean... have guns. <laughs> True. It's like, it's easy. Just do this. Just slice. Ah, oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's like, what if we had a more diverse cast and less brown face, but we made it more offensive? We found that balance. Yeah. <laughs> it... Let's thread that needle. I just... The, I mean, the, the the Native Americans in the film are just... Oh my... God. Uh, the it, two? It's... Yeah. Who don't have speaking lines in English, so you can, you know... The one guy does. He really says, let's get... He said, it. let's uh, get some food, or I'm hungry, or whatever. Yeah. Then everyone's like, you can speak English? And then he never does again. I don't even remember that part. I yeah, yeah. Black He's, like, leaning outside the thing... And the dude who under uh, Denzel Washington's character can understand. Yeah, uh, yeah he leaves the the scene anyway, and then the yeah. the the guy's like, "Let's eat, or I'm hungry, or something." Everyone's just staring at him because he can speak English, but he has like no accent. <laughs> like he just, yeah. he's just a normal. I mean, dude. he has no character either. So. Yeah, no, he's just there. His character is he ate the raw heart of a deer. The only character who like gets any development beyond their introduction in that fucking movie is fucking Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah, because and like you learned much. that he had a family who died. Yeah, um, and it doesn't it doesn't really do anything for him. It doesn't like you won't really feel anything more for the character. We learned something, which is more than you can say for fucking anyone. I didn't even know who one of the guys was. Like, he, ha he showed up shooting. I was like, when did he get introduced? I, I like blinked and I missed it. Uh, was it the, the, <laughs> the, the Civil War veteran? We didn't want to shoot anybody no. ever again? No, that's Ethan Hawke. I recognized him just as being an okay. actor. And also, he was with Knife Guy. They had right. an intro. There's oh, another um, white dude who's just there. Are you sure it's not the Hispanic dude? Maybe it's the Hispanic dude. Maybe that's who I missed. He doesn't speak. To be fair, like he doesn't speak much either. So yeah. if he just shows up, yeah, I don't know. It's There's a mess. another guy who was there. Film was a wreck. Um, I love that your first thing was like, "I'm so glad they showed her cleavage, so we know how to feel about this situation." <laughs> Like I that that opening same scene, thought. she's yeah. mourning over her husband, and the camera's like, "Yo, what if we saw all the way down her shoes, <laughs> her dress?" Yeah, old timey boobs, dress it's like push up uh, bras. The perfect movie for people who can't feel sad unless they're horny. Yeah. Well, they have to feel sad because they have to put themselves in the shoes of the of the <laughs> husband. Can you imagine? Can you imagine dying when? You're married to those tits? <laughs> tragic. Absolutely tragic. It's like, it's just that weird... It's like definitely a tr thing I saw in Hollywood movies, particularly around then, of like... It's like, corporate interests have decided we need diversity, but we're still only going to get a white guy to write this, so they're not going to have any idea how to write any of these characters... So okay. It's going to be a fucking mess. So I that mean, movie was written by one of the cre by the creator of uh that fucking HBO detective show, True, True Detective, True Detective. I don't know. Um detective. maybe it was just me. Uh, so obviously you have a black director though. Obviously cool. you have director of uh, Day. A black character in this time period. Yeah. Um, I feel like they had several different bits explaining, like, or trying to explain, like, why he was there. Or why he was tolerated, for lack of a better word. It felt weird. Anytime they, 
like they mentioned all this stuff for like people like you or like your your people or something they they make like some sort of reference like that and it was like some weird like explanation or backstory or something and i it, I just remember yeah. hearing it, and I'm like, yeah. you guys would have been better off just not saying anything. Like, we didn't need this. We can just yeah, ignore. It, yeah, it was awkward. Like, it if you want to write, write a Western with a black character, maybe don't set it in reality. I don't know. Because the, the approach of, like, it's sort of here, but we're just, it's just not a thing. Like, yeah. It's just like, Gracism isn't real approach or whatever that's not any good <laughs> yeah like, well this way of like it's it's like you can feel it but it's not addressed it's just weird but but the bigger problem is he doesn't have a character well yeah no it's not like, like... denzel <laughs> yeah been in plenty of good movies he's like he's like incredible all he's he's most defining characteristic is his bad facial hair and, like, the movie keeps forgetting he's in it. Like, in the climactic battle, he just, like, disappears for long stretches. Dude, yeah. <laughs> he's just gone. He's in the, like, he suddenly he jumps out of a building on a horse to, like, startle one dude. And then he disappears again. The So that we can focus on Vincent D'Onofrio axing people and going, I am one with the force and the force is with me. The fucking... Or whatever Bible quote he's saying. Oh yeah, uh, no. I think he does the Pulp Fiction one, doesn't he? Though yeah, I walk yeah. through the shadow of the valley. Of the death. valley, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Um, I went with the force, and the force is with me. <laughs> Same thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, fuck. I, I, my train of thought derailed, much like the film. Um, oh, the uh, just the fact that like. They had to turn it... One of the things that I like about the... About, I think, if memory serves, uh, Seven Samurai, and then uh, certainly in, in the original Magnificent Seven, like, you didn't... They weren't facing a fucking army. It wasn't odds that seemed yeah. absolutely insurmountable, and they just happened to win. Like, meanwhile, in this one, it's like... So many fucking people. And it's like, why would you... They, and then they bring out the Gatling gun, because there always needs to be, like, a super weapon reveal. Um, <laughs> why would you, like why would you every, not lead with that? They're trying to take everything... Why wouldn't you lead with the a fucking weapon. Gatling gun? <laughs> if they have one, it'd piss me off. Yeah. Like, if you're willing to just murder them all anyway, why don't you just murder them all? So, I don't... <laughs> this is my... When you're... Because that's yeah, the thing, like... The, the villains in the original are like they're they're at like a human level they have like human interests whereas this is like oh this is the embodiment of corporate greed and evil yeah, yeah. it's like it's like pumped up and then all the characters are all flattened out where they're not they don't feel like real people they don't have any like actual interaction which is something the other movies were really good at like Magnificent Seven the scenes of them just sitting around and like looking at each other are so fucking good. Yeah, 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 <laughs> like, yeah. Like just the way they like they look at each other, you feel like that they're in the same space. Whereas then like they're the people. new one, like they're like actors sitting on a green screen, like yeah. looking at something. Like they're not ever like they don't have any chemistry. They don't have any chemistry. Yeah. Like um, the most you get out of anyone is this is fucking weird. Like Vincent, what voice are you doing, Vincent D'Onofrio? What is that? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. Um. Oh, I so, guess Chris Pratt wants to fuck his gun. Cool. Both guns. He has a side piece. That's the <laughs> joke. Um. I don't I I'm I feel the I feel the need to, to ask your opinion on this because I, I recognize that it's probably a, a flaw in myself and I do it too much. I looked at this film, uh, specifically like the, the story beats and the things they changed. The Gatling gun, yeah. the army, the people like 
firing, like, too many guns and all that shit. And I know that it's possibly incorrect, but my, my first thought is, like, I fucking hate Marvel. Do you think this has, like, is that influenced? Like, are they trying to take, like, some of the action, like, the superhero action and translate it into this unnecessarily? Or is it just, like, completely off and it's just whatever? Because I know I, I, mean, I, it's just, I make that claim a lot, but I... <laughs> it's just Hollywood. It's like the other way around. Like, it's just Hollywood action being bad is, sure. like, the reason the Hollywood action in Marvel movies is bad. Like, it's a okay. deeper problem than it being comic book movies. It's, the, like, the way yeah. they do action with, like, fill-ins off green screens. Sure. bad. Okay. <laughs> like they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't use most. A lot of Hollywood movies aren't using CG in the correct way, or like plotting out their stories well, or you know, getting good scripts. Yeah. Like if your your script is garbage and you're putting your movie together in the editing room, you're like, it just doesn't come together sometimes. Mm hmm. But okay. Yeah, See, like in, uh, I, this, I wouldn't compare to Marvel at all. For sure. one, Marvel movies are better written. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like Chris Pratt in Guardians is at least charismatic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like this is somehow this is like even worse than he is in Jurassic World. Dude, I I thought because this is definitely post uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I, I thought he was just going to be Star-Lord, but a cowboy. So I was at least expecting that. And then he's just dumb as fuck. Like, there's just nothing there. Yeah. He does a magic trick. magic, though. <laughs> the, the, the fucking... You know how much I love magic. That was fucking weird. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, my favorite line is, like, fucking a character is... Uh, Ethan Hawke's character is, like... Oh, this reminds me of my father used to talk, tell me a thing. And then he's just silent. And they go, what, do you, what did you tell you? He's like, oh, he said a lot of things. Like, <laughs> that is that is a good embodiment of this script. Like, they <laughs> didn't put any thought into actually coming up with anything. There's, yeah. like, no content. There's, like, some cliches. And uh, that's about it. Yeah, And they couldn't even keep the... The ideas that were there for it, like blatantly, like this, like it's not like they're pulling from a movie that's subtle about its message. Yeah, like those those stories. This is this movie. These are good movies because they're those original ones because they're simple stories well told. Mm -hmm. But there's a simplicity to it that's like obvious that th this new one just fails at, or I guess rejects. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Cuz like the only way you know the 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 characters in the new one are supposed to be farmers is that you're told. Dude, we don't see there's any no, farming. There's no there's just indication. A, there's just a classic a western farmer. town. Yeah. But we are um, told they are farmers. They're just farmers. They don't know anything, and yet they all have guns and live in a town. I don't What's and then, and then that final, final line, um, the voiceover from uh, "Sad Tits Girl," uh, on par with I, I forget the what's what's the exact line in Godzilla where he's like, "Oh my God, Zilla," is no. that it? <laughs> yes, it's one character goes, "Oh my God," and he goes, "Zilla." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> on par with that, I would say, is. This this woman, the voice like explaining to someone else slash the viewer about how uh, people like these these seven people came in to fight when others could not, even though like literally everybody else was fighting about on par with the the main seven. And as the camera pans out over the graves of the fallen, she says, "And it was magnificent." It it really it really hits the same note as there's a part in The Walking Dead where the main character Rick looks into the the camera in the 
comic and says, we are the walking dead. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a better one. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> that's my favorite. Just like we nail are. on the head. Just, yeah. That's ridiculous. We are the walking dead. It's yeah. like, yes, I know. I've watched your story. I get it. Fuck. Ugh. Humans are the real monsters. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then The Walking Dead goes on long enough that there's then that comic where he goes, we are not The Walking Dead. Oh, it's because, like, it's just gone on too long. Yeah. <laughs> just, just in the end. <laughs> I think I, I think you really summed it up though with uh, like how the the original Magnificent Seven it just it feels like they're interacting with each other and they're like people and they're actual like it doesn't feel like they're just it, the new one feels hollow as shit and yeah. the the original like there's heart there and it, it, it feels like they're not yeah. just characters like, they're they're the people and they're interacting you know with. there's 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 their characters. They're interacting. There's physical space to it. Like, like so much of the original is the physicality of that battle. Yeah. And, like, the, the Magnificent Seven original it doesn't quite get there, but it gets it, – it does a bunch of it. Like, they're, they're the traps that they all go through. But the new one just has, like, none of it, even though it's, like, one street the whole movie takes place in. But yeah. then you're just constantly cutting Dude. to these open fields that have – it, that are CG, basically. Like it, have no... it, it feels so much like a set. <laughs> it yeah. feels like yes. it just, yeah, it's it's so poorly done. And it's not a good. It's like no. the most basic of Hollywood backlots style of like, we put up some cardboard fronts and that's where we're making our movie. Like there's just no effort. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the, it's like, you know, I don't know. It's not the worst movie I've ever seen or anything. It's like, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it is meh. It's whatever. But like, they so fucking tripped over their own feet. Like, this is, this should have been a layup. Like you have, there's so much you have, you just have to take the stuff that worked and then put your charismatic actors in it and let them interact. That's all yeah. you have to do. Yeah, dude. And they failed. Mm-hmm. But Ethan Hawke yelled that one time. That was Ugh. weird. <laughs> that was weird. I can't get over, like, just that they fucked up the thing of these are poor farmers. Yeah. Like, they... And and that these are poor gunmen, like <laughs> so, so many of them are doing fine, and then it's like, yeah, they're getting paid fair wages for what they're doing. Like, what? That is not. That's not the dynamic here at all. Why is that the dynamic? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. For like your story, like it's just weird. Oh, there's there's no dyna- There's no drama to it. There's no dynamic. It's just like. Yeah, I don't know. We got paid to kill, to fight some people. I don't know. It's a mess. There's no connection. There's no connection. There's no... And I don't feel like the farmers won at the end or anything. There's no, like... Also, yeah, also a shitload of of them died. died. Yeah. It feels like proportionally... Like the Gatling win. gun, like the Gatling gun was go destroying so much. I'm like, they should have just lured them into this actual city and blown them up in it. Like that would have been better. <laughs> and yeah. rebuild afterwards. Like that would have been a better plan. <laughs> yeah. Well, it just—it's a fucking mess. Yeah. And that just that awkward. Um, Benzo Washington's character when he's like trying to get the dude to pray. Yeah, well, he's like, and I'm just like, I don't. You have like no. I get that your character is supposed to be pissed, but there's nothing basically that has told me this. So it feels like you're just yeah. torturing a man in front of me, and I'm kind of uncomfortable. 
Just fucking yeah, kill no, him, dude. Totally. <laughs> like it's like why it was is, so awkward. Why is this is what's happening? And then I was, she, she just like, shoots they him. They bail themselves out of it. Yeah. And it felt it was it's like so that good. scene where they they meet the villains, and then the horse is there, and the 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 movie's like, oh, we gotta get this horse out of here. <laughs> so Denzel goes, horse leave, and then the horse leaves, Hell and yeah. then the battle can start. They just had to get that horse out of there. In the most elegant way possible. There was no better way to get that horse out of here than going, horse, fucking Vamanos. fuck off. Yeah. Uh, do you have Do you have any more notes on the original? Or anything uh, else that we, to, to touch on? You know. I mean, it is like, Hollywoodified, like the music is all it's so is so like hilariously upbeat. Yeah, like it doesn't. It, there's no point of it. it's like like Seven Samurai. It's clear from the beginning. Like th- this mission is fucked. <laughs> yeah, is, Seven Samurai felt a lot more serious. And also, it's like we need at least seven people to do this, which neither Magnificent Seven movie really really nails down those details they're mm. like yeah we get seven that's a that's a number right <laughs> it doesn't mean anything but you have to have it my favorite part is in the new one is when like one of them leaves and the girl comes to denzel in the church and she's like i'll i'll be your seventh and then in the battle she's just you know with a bunch of other random townies shooting yeah <laughs> yeah <not> like... <laughs> So many sevens. So, like, there's a strategic use. <laughs> Everyone on that balcony was told that they were the only seventh <laughs> to go to that balcony. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. No, that, that, it was laughably bad. I thought it was just going to be, like, modern Hollywood but the same yeah. thing. I mean, at the time, I wanted to see it. I'm like, that'll probably be fine. Well, how can you, how can you fuck up the Magnificent Seven that badly? Now you know. <laughs> that guy made that kid put his hand in that bottle of dirt. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where he's making them like, <laughs> yeah. It's that all weird about land. Scene the movie started with. Yeah. Which also like felt got the wrong Western guys. It also felt it's like comparing to like in High Noon, where it feels like again. Oh shit! Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Cool. My I hadn't touched my mouse and so on. My screen shut off. I think this happened last time. Okay. Um, mm. just makes me nervous. Uh, in High Noon, where they're in the church, like it, it, it still feels like it's people, and in this church again, yeah. like even just sitting there in church, I'm like, this just feels like it's actors though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's hard to put your finger on why that is. Yeah. But. Well, I couldn't, in, in that church scene, I can't point to anything specific. Yeah. Maybe because the villain is just a corporation. I wonder. Well, it, it probably has something to do with, like, the, the editing. Probably. The way it's, like, cut together. Yeah. I'm sure someone it out there is, like, like, has a laundry list of reasons, but. Cause so, oh, cause so much of like what makes the the sixties version work is the the amount of time characters you have to breathe and just like you know give a glance or whatever. Like the movie is at a pace where a character looking at another character is something that's readable rather than like oh and this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens and this happens. Yeah, it's just more modern. Hollywood style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that. Yeah, there's plenty of because that's the thing. Like the the Magnificent Seven is a Hollywood movie. It's, it's yeah, it's it's bloated and it's corny, but it's so and good. it has brown face. <laughs> but somehow, you know, it still comes together. It has a charismatic villain. He has a character to him. Yeah. Like, he's a, he's also a person. <laughs> yeah. He's not, yeah. like, fucking Bud. 
Then he's not a new yeah, one. He's not a. Yeah, he's not like a cliche. He's not a. He's not a corporation in a hat. Yeah. yeah. He's not a monster. He's like a shitty person. I love when he lets the like he lets them go. He's like, I get you, you mercenaries. We're all criminals. You outlaws here. I'll even give you your guns back, even though I'm gonna make a show of not giving you your of taking your guns. Cause like whatever, we're the same. Yeah. And then they're like, nah, we're not the same. <laughs> we're we're gonna we're gonna murder the shit out of you and I'll almost all die, just cause we don't know what else to do. <laughs> yeah. And like, so that movie is really like. These characters are fucking. These people are like ruined by the Civil War. That is that is like the the thing that's not text there. Mm-hmm. It's like these are like in the same way the samurai in Seven Samurai are like from this old era when there were these wars that they were all part of and they've survived these battles. Like in Magnificent Seven, none of that's explicit. They don't talk about the Civil War at all. But it it's the same idea like it you you can read it in there it's not it doesn't disappear whereas like i don't get a sense of any of the characters as being having gone through anything in the new one yeah <laughs> there's like no connection to reality dude, even the dude even even Knox character who's like supposedly the veteran and fought in the wars and is affected like I, it doesn't feel no, like it no and that's weird, because, like, again, in the original, there's nothing in the script about it. Fucking nothing. But you f- you can feel it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now we can move on to the Dollars movies. Yeah. I So I have... I mean, as I, as I mentioned, I did not yeah. get to finish Good, Bad, and Ugly because I had the extended edition... And it's like three hours even. I think it's like two fifty eight. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then I just got, you know, I'm I'm making lunch. I'm doing. I'm living my life. Yeah. And it was an extra one, yeah. so I didn't feel too bad about it. Um, yeah. No. I have I have a chunk of notes on few dollars more and uh, <laughs> fistful of dollars. My only note is that the kid is the most annoying thing in the entire world. <laughs> That was my note. It's fucking terrible. Yeah, and I don't. Re- I don't really remember that much about it. My thing I remember is like this movie's a little overrated, and it's certainly having watched Yojimbo pretty frequently. I know it's not anywhere close to as good as Yojimbo. Yojimbo is so fucking good, and it's all about the charis- charisma of its main character, and like Clint Eastwood's Man with No Name just does not. So have that energy at all. <laughs> yeah, this made it, it made me want to go back and watch it. <laughs> like yeah. I'm like, man, this is a good plot. I should go back. Yeah, it is it is a good setup. Like it Fistful of Dollars still a good movie. Although I do have a personal big problem with all the dollars movies just because of the ADR where they didn't take any live audio from the set and it's all done in recording rooms, and so they're Lip flaps don't always match up well, and it bothers me. And sometimes, watch these movies. dude, it, yeah. Um, so I actually, because well, it's so the way they shot the way they shoot, shoot those movies is everyone spoke their native tongue, and they didn't record any live audio on set. They did it. Everyone was then redone in the booth for whatever language they were gonna ship it in. Right. And I just hate that yeah. uh, approach just because when I'm watching the movie and the lip flaps don't match up well, it it takes me out and I enjoy I just have a less good time. Yeah. I don't like that obvious I, nearly as as much as I didn't because it feels a little fake. Yeah. I didn't notice it as much in a few dollars more. It was kind of later, and I'm like, the audio stuff is is getting to me a little, and I didn't, I, yeah. for some reason, it didn't like, I didn't notice it right away. But then for Fistful of Dollars and Good, Bad, and Ugly, I'm like, this is just, poof, this is rough. 
<laughs> like, yeah, it gets it gets to be a well, bit like much. so. A lot of the, the best stuff of that those movies is not dialogue parts. Like those are definitely the parts that work the best. Yeah, because of that too. But there's like just a lot of good parts that the characters are communicating without dialogue, or you know, mm-hmm. Clint Eastwood's not talking that much. Yeah, um, that stuff works better. So. Which is one of my one of my the reasons good bad and the ugly because that's the most dialogue heavy. Yeah, um, because you have these characters interacting more frequently. Fistful a few dollars more like finds the balance a little better for me because I do genuinely like the character interaction stuff. It's just the ADR kind of kills it for me. Yeah, uh, I think I agree with you. By the way, a few dollars more is my favorite of the three. Yeah, it's just, it has, like, the setup of these three characters is very good, and it's just less bloated than (laughs) The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Yeah. Like, it's Um, just a tighter movie. It has more, the drama's cleaner. So, the order I watched them, I did a few dollars more, because that's our main one. I wanted to make sure that I, I got it done. And then I did mm-hmm. Fistful of Dollars and Good, Bad, and Ugly. And for Good, Bad, and Ugly, I, I wasn't actually aware that that's where that fucking song came from. That's one of the two notes I wrote was just like the first thing. I'm like, this fucking theme song, that's the one. <laughs> that was it. Yes. Uh-huh. So... That was... I will also say, like, one of the reasons I like A Few Dollars More the best is I like that theme song the most. I like that, the song that's in that one. Yeah. More um, than the ones in the other So my, my note on A Few Dollars, I wanted to talk about the theme because in A Few Dollars More, my first note was, where's the theme song? You know, at this point, I'm used to getting serenaded. Well, the film does its title and whatnot. I'm like, where is it? And I'm like, oh... Oh, now here we the, the jaw harp right on, bow, bow, bow. and then they start doing some gunshots. I'm like, oh, this is sick, the gunshots. And then my next note is too many gunshots. Calm down, because <laughs> it just keeps going. Like, <laughs> just it just not, doesn't. There's not restraint, dude. They're not holding back. They just told. They're like, the guy asks like, how many gunshots should I put in? They're like, how much does your heart want? And he just fucking <laughs> smashed that button. Oh, this is... It, yeah. Gorge. Gorge yourself on gunshots. Yeah. I just... And I like the bit at the showdown with the... The second, like, pocket watch with music. Yes. Like, yes. that moment is so good. That was incredible. <laughs> that, that, that when it just cuts into the second one, it's so good. Yeah. And, and that then, like the orchestra swells. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes off the rails. It's so good. Um and also cuz that part whole part has no dialogue. So it's like Yeah. <laughs> the uh the tension in this film was fucking incredible. Like it does so well. Yeah. I this, it was Like incredible. I love that you don't know you like you don't know what the the deal is with the man in black like you don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy yeah that, I think that plays incredibly well like whereas in um good bad the ugly that character is just a bad guy whereas in this like mm-hmm. he's he's like a rival for Clint Eastwood but then he turns out to be to like actually just be in this for revenge, <laughs> yeah. To avenge his sister. Pretty good. Yeah, they're and they're. I I love their interaction. Like they seem to work well together. Like the actors. Mm-hmm. I I forget the other dude's name. Um, I've read it so many times over the last few days, but. Uh, yeah, Andy they're in Lee Van Cleef. Yes. Yeah, they're they were just really good together. Um, yeah. So previously, the only Clint Eastwood film I've ever seen was Gran Torino. <laughs> mm. 
Like I knew Which Clint Eastwood is old man Jesus. The like epitome white savior. Yeah. Because um, he gets gunned down and like he goes into a, a cross pose. Yeah. Um, I, I like that movie when I saw it. I, it has not aged well in my mind, particularly because uh, Clint Eastwood has been a real piece of shit. I fucking <laughs> loved life. that movie when I saw it. Yeah. I was like 14. Mm-hmm. I think it was the first R rated yeah. film I saw in theaters. It was like my dad took me and my mm-hmm. friend. <laughs> uh huh. You know, I mean, I like that. I like that movie a lot, but that is not. It is. It has not know, aged I've well. I've rewatched it. It has not aged well. In particular, it has not aged well because Clint Eastwood has been much more of a piece of shit. Yeah. Since that movie. Yeah. yeah. Um. No, for uh, for a few dollars more, the. The dialogue was so good. Like, it really hit... It hit a sweet spot of, like, wisecracks. And... I I don't know. It walked the line between, like, funny and serious. Even though it feels like it never got close to being serious. But I think it's because of the tension. Like, that tension was just there. And... Yeah. It kind of lent itself to to making it feel like it was more serious. Even though there's, like, the fucking duel with their hats... And they're just shooting at each other's hats. <laughs> so good. I love like the, the few dollars more ends with Clint Eastwood like counting up the money he's getting from all these dead bodies, and he's like, "Ah, oh, something's missing." Yeah. The dude. other dude jumps out and he shoots him. It's like, ah, there we go. I thought I was doing my addition wrong. Yeah. Got any trouble? I don't know. It's fine. It's so good. It's such a good... His delivery is so it's good. Just, it's just a... It's a fun time. Yeah. No, that movie is... That movie is great. I, I think it, like... on it For me, it far surpasses the other two, honestly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how I felt when I watched them. Again, my feeling that it's the most came from watching all three of them in a row. And going, you know, I think for a few dollars more is my favorite. Yeah, and then just holding on to that feeling. Well, it's because nobody has time to watch three hour film. <laughs> yeah, when you're because the good and bad, the ugly. When you watch them in a row, really feels like for a few dollars more again, but bloated. <laughs> yeah, to me, like there's just a lot. It it feels like it's treading similar ground of having. Even, like there's plenty that's different about the the plot and the character dynamics, but it's like similar enough, and it's just so much more bloated. It's just uh, things take longer, and yeah, I don't know. I don't like that song as much. You know, that's <laughs> the more famous one. I don't like it as much. I think for me, it has it has less character because it's in fucking everything. Uh-huh. Like, oh, there's two people. It's in fucking Jimmy Neutron. Like, it's, it loses some of the punch. Like, also, like, I know that song, and, like, the original version comes to mind if I think of it, but the second thing that comes to mind is fucking Sheen, and I don't know if it's the movie or if it's an episode of Jimmy Neutron that I happen to catch. But, like, there's a weird standoff, and, of course, they play that little beat, and then Sheen's like, wah, wah, wah. And, like, that's, it, it's ruined. A little bit. Yeah. I feel like I do have, like, more neg. I just have negative connotations with the wah, wah, wah. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. It's, like, a little annoying. Whereas the... Boom, boom, boom. For a few dollars more. Mm Mm-hmm. That bounce. Bounce is... That that bounce. The jaw harp, dude. It's... (laughs) Yeah, man. Undeniable. It's too good. It's too good. Who would have known that my my one true love would come to me in black folk metal, Western films? Jaw harp. Too I mean, the strong. composer of all these movies, Ernio Marcone, is fucking very good. <laughs> yeah. No, the the soundtracks I mean, for all of them are quite died. are quite good. 
Um, so there's a bunch of pieces of people like just talking about how good he is. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's done a shit ton of movies. But uh, the dollar the the dollar trilogy is some of his most famous stuff. But I'm trying to remember what the uh, so early on in few dollars more when when Clint Eastwood gets to the town, and he's and like the kid is recommending that he stay at this inn. And he's like, there is a landlady there. And Clint Eastwood's like, is she married? The kid's like, well, yeah, but she don't care. <laughs> <laughs> and then the chick is just like the quint like just shoving her. Like, this is how you show tits in a Western. You're just like, just there. She's like adjusting them and everything. And her husband is like really short. Like four feet she's tall. Like, she sees Clint Eastwood and he, she's like, oh, he's so tall. Tall, isn't he? <laughs> God. <laughs> it's just so good. It just yeah, like gets the I guy out of that suite. Yeah. Oh, that seems fucking weird. Like what did he do to that guy? Dude, that dude that, guy, is that guy doesn't even that guy doesn't even want like any he's just like, let me pay. Let me pay and get the fuck out of here. Clint, what did you do this and poor man? Was like comes down is like, yo, you forgot your fucking long johns. I don't wings. wear them. I don't wear them. And the, <laughs> the chick is just like, oh. <laughs> uh. I like just like how that movie introduces its characters. Where you have Van Cleef gets his bounty. Yes. First. It's like a thousand dollars. Then he sees this other bounty that's like two thousand dollars, and then we get Clint Eastwood beats him to it. Yeah, dude. And then we get the the ten thousand dollar bounty. They both go after. It's good, good build up. Yeah, no, every everything about that film just felt good. That one still feels a little long to me. They could have, they could have cut that, well, cut that down to that sweet ninety minutes. Dude, that that perfect. <laughs> once you, once you, life. once you get a, get used to Godzilla time, everything else feels like fucking eternity. Just like just, you could edit your movie down, and it would be probably better. Probably. It would fucking. I mean, you could probably fuck it up too, but. Hey, get in there. Get it in the editing booth and give us the Godzilla cut of a few dollars more. Of every movie. Of every, yeah, the, honestly, the of every movie. cut of every movie. Every give us movie the, the, 90 minutes. the Godzilla cut of, uh, <laughs> of Avengers Endgame. Trim it down. <laughs> I think that, I think he went, I think after... Um, good, bad, and good. Like he made like a West, like Once Upon a Time in the West, which like might be even longer. Mm. <laughs> Giulioni, I think, just went in the direction of more excess. Ugh. Lord know. of the Rings is like is. bad enough. <laughs> yeah. 166 minutes. I think that's that's still less than Good Bad. Yeah, and it the is ugly. less. That's the that's like eleven minutes less than Good Bad and the Ugly. Yeah, which is a running time of one hundred and seventy-seven, apparently, according to Wikipedia. But I don't know if that's like the extended cut. Or... So, well, it's two. It's two fifty-eight. So what is that? That's like uh, that's one. No, that has to be the extended cut then. Two fifty-eight. That should be. Or 258. Okay, yeah. so it's like mine just has a bit of chuff on one side or the other. Or whatever. Or something. Yeah. yeah. God, it's so fucking long. Um, also, just like... I mean, I say this, and my favorite movie from last year is four hours long. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I can... I can be, depending on the movie, I can be won over. But This, this isn't the one. Um, no. No. You know what also wasn't the one? The Irishman. That was movie also. Dude, too long. Anya keeps wanting. She's recommended it, and I'm like, Anya, it's like eleven at night. 
I have work tomorrow. I mean, you I just watched episode one. I can't fucking sit <laughs> it's just, down and it's watch. It's like a TV show. Ugh. I can't sit down and watch a three and a half hour film. I just can't. I can barely do that on a Saturday at 10 a.m. You just watch it, you know, 30 minutes at a time. Ugh. Um, the way it was meant to be watched. What was I going to... Oh, uh, I just also really like the... Uh, and I, I, after doing some reading, apparently this was the film that kind of popular, popularized, popularized this. Um, like the, the, the bounty hunter trope. And like people, yeah. like it, it made it be like a, a cool thing. Also, <laughs> I recognize that like it's because it's one of the first, but like the fact that they keep calling them bounty killers, just yeah. messing with my mind. Bounty killers. No, because it, it's the it, the Western genre. You look at the progress. It's like similar to superhero stuff. Of like, you have the the first wave of like the good guys are good guys, and it you know it yeah. is what it is. It's like standard. And then you have the wave of like, oh, it's all dark and fucked up. Uh, <laughs> we're blurring. We're blurring the lines. Except you know, it's. The quality can be different, but it is that same sort of idea of like you have the rea- you have the the stuff that sets the model and sets the standard of of a genre, and then you have the stuff that then comes later that's coming out of somewhere else that's influenced by that stuff that is then like subverting it somehow. Yeah, or whatever. Um, I also had a, a, a question. Maybe maybe you know, maybe you don't. Is spaghetti western like? Is that a term that people still use? It means they come from Italy. Yeah, I know, but like, <laughs> it doesn't seem okay. Kind of. You know, when you when you when you say it, it definitely doesn't. Like, but it's like how people I, still, still say Chinese checkers, even though that game is German. I, I like, ask that like I like offensively named when it when it comes to stuff that I know that Anya has no experience with. I love to yeah. like give her little quizzes, so I'm like Anya, why are why are these films called spaghetti westerns? She's like, um, they are they are they long? Eat are spaghetti. they really long? And I'm like, well, yes, but that's not why. And she's like, um, do they come from Italy? I'm like, yeah, that's it. That there's yeah, they come from Italy. She's like, that's typical racist Americans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. you know, now I feel bad. Oh, it's just, I, I found that interesting, that on Wikipedia, that's like the first thing. This film is a spaghetti western. I'm like, that, it feels like there's a better term out there. Italian western? I Italian know. western would be fine. Uh, so, with the the broader genre of um, those westerns that are coming out, were coming out of Italy... Like a lot of them are not are not any good as movies, but the the a lot of them are they're still worth watching in a lot of cases because they'll have like some uh, prac like stunt scene or something that's just fucking unbelievable like really fucking good. They'll mm-hmm. have like one this one part. Like I watched this movie that was like what is it S- the Sundance. What it, so it's normally it's Billy the Kid or Billy and the Sundance. What was it, what's the normal version of those? Ugh, it was just backwards. Butch, what is it? Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. It was like, it was like the Butch Kid and Cassidy. Sun- I don't remember. I don't remember the name of the movie. <laughs> it was something that was like taking two iconic names and just like flipped them. Okay. So it was like we, my friend watched it as a joke and it was like not a good movie, but it had this like one scene where it was a fight scene except the room was covered in soap. And it was like an <laughs> unbelievable stunt work of just like this floor is like completely covered in soap. And Hell yeah. people are just sliding around. <laughs> And you're just like, this is unbelievable. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I think it's 
Butch the Kid and Sundance Cassidy. Okay. on like like we just saw it in like a Best Buy and a like four pack of westerns or whatever I was like that's a dumb title that's like that other mo real movie <laughs> American movie but like you changed it around a little bit mm. and it wasn't great but it had it had that one scene I was like, yeah wow. that one bit yeah so, like, they were, as a genre, they were incredibly influential on, like, filmmakers, because filmmakers would just watch those movies just for those bits. Like, yeah. Like, these guys, like, just try and practical stunt work stuff. So that's one of the, like, the legacies of that, that genre of movie. It's not even, like, they're them as stories. It's them as, like, pieces of stunt work. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... The other thing that's like it, that's like crazy about how bad that new Magnificent Seven is, <laughs> is that there are actually a, a handful of like there's like a bunch of modern westerns around that time that are good. <laughs> Wh which like, ones? Um, As someone who doesn't like, pay attention. <laughs> like there's, um, Tarantino's. Like Django Unchained. Okay, okay, yeah, I've seen that. That's uh, good. Hateful Eight. Hateful Eight, um, I've not seen. The Coen Brothers made a western called True Grit. That's a remake of a John Wayne movie. Or yeah, it's like based on I was, the same you know, book as gonna, a John Wayne movie. I was gonna ask about that. Is that one also good? Yeah, True Grit's very good. The remake or the original or both? The remake. Okay. The original just, just is like, sure. do you, do you want to see John Wayne in a fake eye patch? <laughs> Just um, standing around in an eye patch. That's like all I can see when I look at that movie. I couldn't watch more than a few minutes of it. I'm like, this is so fucking bad looking. <laughs> mm -hmm. You were just in this eye patch. I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't deal. I couldn't deal. It also just like it was like it just had the the land wrong for the story. Mm -hmm. It was like green forests and like. It should be like bleaker desert. <laughs> yeah. But that like there's a the girl who's who's in True Grit and her performance is fucking really great. Like one of the best kid performances in the movie. Nice. Yeah. No. I'll. I'm more much more inclined to check out westerns now. It's not John Wayne westerns. Yeah. You can go fuck himself. Yeah. Honestly. Um, I'm f definitely forgetting some other ones. I'll say. Oh yeah, uh, a a not great modern western, but one that's certainly better than Magnificent Seven is uh, Pixar's The Good Dinosaur, which is not a good movie, <laughs> but it is the first P Pixar movie I saw that was like, oh, they got wa they know how to do water now. Like the water yeah. in that movie is unbelievable. I remember you mentioned. And then Moana came out, and I was like, oh, okay, now we have a good movie with the good water. <laughs> um, I think a local that, that movie has Tyrannosaurus Rexes that are like cattle rustlers. A local, um, <laughs> when I was in when I was in university, uh, back in Wisconsin, still the not the local game store for Magic, but like the local like classic video game place, like buy sell trade. Um, uh -huh. for a while they had like their TV behind the register, and they would just be they would just run uh the good dinosaur. Uh, like silent because uh -huh. it looks nice and they would just have like music overlaid <laughs> <laughs> and it looked really good if you didn't like know what yeah. was going on um yeah oh you know what there was a another western I, I forget how old it is i i saw it ages ago what about rango do you ever see rango i never seen rango i enjoyed it but i was also kind of small so <laughs> i might watch it again yeah. and report back I don't think I could deal with it. No. <laughs> can't deal with Johnny Depp chameleon? I can't deal with Johnny Depp. <laughs> Why? He's a piece of shit. <laughs> Do not. Uh, I mean, violence. 
No, didn't it? no. Amber Heard was d d abusing him though. Uh, also, he he. I find him very annoying. All his gimmicks and acting. I mean, that's fair. I fucking loved okay, Pirates done. One, and then I watched more stuff by him, and that was kind of. It got to be a bit much. I was really on board that train for a while. I'm not totally off of him, but like, there is a limit. I'm a human. I'm I'm off that train. I can't. I can't. I can't. But also, been... like every movie he's been in has looked fucking like in recent years has looked fucking terrible. So. Oh yeah, no. I mean, lately, sure. But then there was like. I, don't know, I watched that Fantastic Beast movie and it like snuck Johnny Depp <laughs> into the end, and that's when I knew this was all bad. Everything was. I had to get out. Well, again. so I got out early. <laughs> <laughs> I got out before before the ship sunk. Hell yeah! <laughs> Much. Like much like uh, Johnny Depp's introduction in Pirates of the Caribbean. Just step off onto the dock because uh, it's going down. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, we've been talking for two hours. Well, you know, sometimes you got to talk for as long as one of these movies <sighs> about. We got another hour. We got another hour. Quick, find the filler. <laughs> We need we need Civil War reenactors. Bring them yeah, in. We're out, we're out here talking about how good these ninety minute movies are. Imagine ninety minute podcasts. Though. Imagine if we stuck to Godzilla time. <laughs> Imagine. I, I mean, if we wanted to do that, we shouldn't have watched seven movies. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not my fault. The chunk you gave me was good, and I wanted to see more. I don't know why. I don't know why they connected with me like more than the other ones. <laughs> Maybe because it's like more recent or like more a, a bigger part of like my my cultural knowledge. They have like, like a I know lot, a, they have they have a bunch of the same like positive qualities as like the Kurosawa movies, but they're much shorter and easier to digest. <laughs> That's probably it. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> Because, like, those Kurosawa movies are very long. Yeah. Uh, they're great, but... But, like, but more these contemplative. westerns are more, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have more going on. Um, there's something more digestible about these movies. I mean, the more impressive thing about yeah, doing... Uh, other than The Searchers. The the more impressive thing about doing... Yeah, no, Searchers is... <laughs> that's a, a different not, thing. That's not a good time. No. Um, the more impressive thing about doing this to our podcast is that the turkey I ate beforehand was both very spicy and possibly undercooked. So Ooh. I was not sure if I was going to make, like we were, I, I didn't know how this was going to go. Mm. I don't actually know if it was undercooked, but it wasn't dry as shit. So I have a hard time telling, like it, it tasted good. It felt good, but I'm used to turkey just being bone dry. So. I'm suspicious. Yeah, no, this was a, this was this was great, and it does make like it, <laughs> the it it was like the perfect accumulation, like a or maybe, yeah, yeah, I think that's the right word. Culmination. Culmination, accumulation. You know what? I'm from Wisconsin. Don't make fun of me for my accent and my thermos. Um. <laughs> It made me want to go back and check, like, Humphrey Bogart. Maybe I'm like, damn, I should go watch Castlevania. Yeah, Ca Casablanca. Castlevania. Castlevania. You know what? Yes. You know what? Hank, it's been two hours. Get the fuck out of here. I should do both. I'll watch Casablanca while playing Castlevania. Um, look, look, it's just like in Magnificent Seven when he sh the guy's, oh, that one scout's almost escaped and he aims and shoots. And the kids like cheering him on, like, "Oh, that was such a good shot!" And he's the worst. I was aiming at the horse. <laughs> Hell yeah! So like, look, we nailed out a banger, but maybe we actually missed the mark. Who knows? Yes. 
But anyway. Anyway, it was a good time. You can email a great us, salt circle podcast at gmail.com. Find us salt circle pod on Twitter. Our podcast is on various podcasting apps Google, Stitcher, iTunes, Spotify, Salt Circle Podcast. You can find me on Twitter at Comic Panels. Our episodes and, are hosted at Salt at Anchor.fm so Salt Circle. Just making sure I'm at the dead last. I, I see. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm yes. on Twitter, if anybody cares, at uh, Dr. Underscore Atheist. No T at the so end. Yeah, I had to save it to make sure you got your new I thought of it. changed, I had, yeah. corrected. Yeah, because I lost my old one. Ugh. Honestly, I just I was just did a sequencing error, and I said things in the wrong order. And I mean, that checks out. I didn't know. I just had to. <laughs> had to fix it. <laughs> had to. Oh, so there's, you know how in High Noon the train's coming in and all that black smoke is coming out of it? Yeah. That's because the brakes failed on the train. <laughs> oh, shit. So they just kept that shot in because, you know. Looks, looks good. Cool. Yeah, no, it looks good. It looks cool. <laughs> That's great. It, it looks Jeez. wild. It looks real ominous. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that was, that was brake failure. Also in... For a few dollars more, I think they had to shoot the explosion twice for some reason. Mm. Like they had to blow up that bank again. Oh. For some reason. Hmm. That's wild. Well. Yeah. That sounds expensive. This has been a salty circle. Magnificent. <laughs>